Today, we're going to be looking into the history of the Minstrel Show, how it relates to a day of the races, and why we should care about it now. The Minstrel Show was a form of American entertainment from the early 19th century. It consisted of a variety acts, sketches, skits, music, and dance, all designed to mock people of African descent. They were primarily performed by white people who painted their faces black with overdrawn lips and wearing Afro-textured wigs. These shows promoted caricatures of black people as happy-go-lucky, foolish, stupid, clumsy, lazy, and buffoonish. If you're anything like me, you're asking yourself, how did this even happen? Well, between 1840 and 1860, there was a huge rush of people moving to the big cities, and these rural workers needed to radically change their lifestyles in order to fit into the urban environment, and they were seeking a substitution for their folk culture. This led to theater shows becoming massively popular, and particularly after the War of 1812, there was this urgent desire for Americans to have their own popular culture separate from Europe, and particularly separate from British culture. Prior to this, black characters and popular songs were comic relief or romanticized noble savages, both stereotypes from English and European narratives of Africans. After the War of 1812, with the scramble to find a distinctly American pop culture, the caricature of black people changed to a distinctly Afro-American. It was ironically a British man called Charles Matthews who visited America in 1822 to do research. He attended a performance of Hamlet by the African Theatre Company, a residential black theatre troupe based out of New York. During the performance, the audience demanded the actor stop mid soliloquy to sing a song, A Possum Up a Gum Tree. Editing Katie here, Possum Up a Gum Tree was a popular slave freedom song. Matthews then used this song in his act, A Trip to America, making it the first example of a white man stealing from black culture for a blackface act. These minstrel shows were incredibly popular. They were absolutely huge all over the US and also in Europe when they went on tour. They depicted black people from the perspective of white slave owners. Lazy, foolish, uncivilized, happy-go-lucky, stupid. And sadly, traces of their lineage are still in our pop culture today. In A Day of the Races, there are three problematic close-up shots of the dancers which Karen Willis in his essay, Blackface Minstrelsy and Jazz Signification in Hollywood's Early Sound Era, calls racial cuts. An edit specifically timed to freeze and frame the character in a stereotypical racial pose or gesture. The way these shots are framed and the over-exaggerated facial expressions of the dancers becomes part of the stereotype which separates Tiny, Norma, and Leon from who they are as people, as artists, as performers, and it makes them little more than a punchline. The person behind the camera is taking advantage of these true expressions of joy and reframing them into a cartoonish image which fits the stereotype of black people. These shots are a direct line to what minstrelsy was. When the blackface does emerge, it appears to mark the thorough racial containment of the Lindy dancers, Evie Anderson, and other African-American jazz performers in the scene. Interestingly, Sadly, but interestingly, this is not the only example of what Willis calls co-presence when an African-American performer is performing alongside a blackface performer. You can also see it in the film Kid Millions from 1934, where you see the Nicholas Brothers performing alongside Eddie Cantor in blackface. Both of these are examples of African-American performers having their first debut on Hollywood stage alongside blackface performers. It's almost like in order to become a fully mainstream star, you have to suffer through this incredible injustice. So why should you care? Knowing this history helps us understand that Lindy Hop and other black art forms are created in the context of struggle against deep racism and that white people have always sought to appropriate them. Understanding the history of this dance will enrich your experience of it, help you understand and empathize with other people. Those who do not understand history are doomed to repeat it. It'll also help you be less shitty when you encounter black dancers in your scene or help you think about whether black dancers feel comfortable in your scene. I've included a list to all of my sources in the doobly-doo. I can highly recommend making yourself an account on archive.org. There's so many amazing sources of information on there and it's where I did most of my research for this video. Thank you to all my patrons, especially Apache, who has been amazing to chat to about historical sources. On a personal note, this is a really hard video to make. Researching it took forever and it was painful. Trying to find the right words was really difficult. This is a difficult thing to talk about. I felt wildly underprepared the entire time, but I truly believe this is a conversation worth having and I want to do right by those who came before me. So 
even if I'm clumsy and even if this isn't perfect, I still really want to try and have this conversation. I hope you do too. And that's it. I'm done. I'm so done. Let's edit this thing. Oh God.